I'm Vikram. I head product management for uh, all our language and speech-based technologies at AWS ML. And today, I'm going to be talking about how you can build applications using all the various tools that we provide uh, as part of our stack um, at AWS. So some of the capabilities I'm going to talk about are Amazon Transcribe, which is our speech recognition service, Amazon Translate, which is our translation service, Amazon Poly for text-to-speech, uh, Amazon Comprehend for natural language processing, and Amazon Lex for, conversational, for building conversational interfaces. But before I go into each of these specific services, I want to talk about how customers are using a bunch of these services together to satisfy some common use cases so that it sets your mind thinking, right? Like, uh, you're able to re relate to some of these use cases and start. So let's go through some use cases, right? So uh, with these services, customers are building voice of customer applications. What do I mean by that? So if you have a product out in the market, you want to know exactly what your customers are thinking about your product, right? So whether it's tweets, whether it's Facebook posts, whether they are uh, product reviews or emails, you want to be able to analyze all this. And you can do that with a tool such as Comprehend, which gives you the sentiment, which is extracting the entities for you, which is extracting key phrases. And for customer service, let's say you have all these audio phone calls that you have recorded, right? This is all speech data. How do you analyze that? You can do that by transcribing that using Amazon Transcribe first. Once you get that in text, you can then analyze using Comprehend to get, again, the entities, the sentiment, and so on. Also, IVR, right? Uh, how many of you have dialed into a contact center and then you know, been stuck with press 1, press 2, press 3, and by the time it goes to press 7, you've forgotten what press 2 is, right? Uh, you can provide a conversational experience on the IVR using tools like Lex. Enterprise digital assistance. Uh, so for large enterprises that have all this data sitting uh, there and it needs to make that accessible to their employees uh, using a conversational interfaces, they can build chatbots using which uh, their employees can ask questions like, hey, how much vacation do I have? Or what's the policy on uh, purchasing uh, a laptop or something like that? Uh, personalization. So uh, we have customers that are using Comprehend uh, to understand the sort of uh, data or uh, text or articles that are, their customers are reading, and then based on that, recommend future articles, right? So we've got tools like uh, topic modeling, uh, key phrase extraction uh, that you can use in order to do these uh, recommendations. Knowledge management um, and semantic search, they sort of uh, go together. So using tools like uh, Comprehend Classification, you're able to classify your documents and manage all the knowledge uh, more efficiently and keep a better uh, grip on all your data. Uh, semantic search. So if you're using Elasticsearch to put all your text in it and then search through it, you, you can boost your search by extracting the key phrases and then um, building an in index based on those key phrases. Captioning workflow. So if you are a media um, a, a company that's uh, serving um, video on demand, uh, and you want to add captioning to make it more accessible, you can use Transcribe to do that. And once you add captioning, you want to make it in multiple languages so that it's accessible to people that don't speak the original language. You can do that using uh, translation. translation. Uh, education, so tools like Poly, uh, are being used to, uh, you know, by uh, customers like Duolingo in the education space. You can also use Transcribe to uh, transcribe uh, class lectures and provide notes and things like that in the education space. And of course, uh, most importantly, uh, all these services can be used to uh, improve accessibility. Um, you know, services such as Lex, uh, Poly, as well as Transcribe uh, are all useful to improve the accessibility of your product. So the first question uh, that we want to help our customers with is, how do you make your applications conversational, right? In order to solve this, we launched a service called Amazon Lex. 
Um, so what we essentially did was, after we launched Alexa, a lot of customers came to us and said, hey, Alexa is great, uh, we love the experience, but we would also like to build uh, you know, something of our own, which is standalone, which can do both voice and text. Um, how do we do that? And so we took the core technologies from Alexa and then uh, you know, modified them accordingly to suit uh, the use cases that we were seeing and launched a product called uh, Amazon Lex uh, as an AWS service. So what you get with Lex is a one-stop shop for all your conversational needs, right? Right from your speech recognition and natural language understanding, uh, which we call a speech to intent, because you go all the way from uh, the input being speech to uh, finally figuring out what the intent is. And we also do text input. Um, and then we have dialogue management, where uh, you know, if you're, let's say, booking a flight ticket and you want to know they told you, hey, book a ticket to Chennai. And you want to know, OK, what date you want to travel. So that's part of dialogue management, where you figure out that they already told you which city they want to travel to. So you don't ask for that again. You sort of go and ask for the next piece of data that you need from the customer. Deployment. So you're able to, once you build your bot, have a multi-channel experience where you can have the same experience on your website, on your mobile app, on your uh, phone as an IVR, uh, on platforms such as Facebook and uh, Kick Messenger uh, or SMS. So you can deploy to all these different platforms, or Alexa as well. Uh, scale, so because it's a managed service, you don't have to worry about uh, managing your servers and so on. Uh, business logic, really important piece, because a conversational bot only helps you with understanding what the customer is saying. Right? But you have to take actions. You have to go actually change your backend system somewhere. You have to maybe uh, go fetch the user's details and, and things like that, for which you need to execute some code. And in order to do that, uh, we provide integration with Lambda, which, is, which makes it really convenient uh, for you to go run your business logic once the conversational uh, part is done. Security. So security is super important for us. You know, there's a lot of tools out there that, uh, you know, that are claiming to help customers build conversational interfaces. But then uh, for high security use cases like banking and such, uh, you need uh, a tool that will take care of your data, that has encryption, that has um, authentication, that uh, integrates with tools like Cognito for user authentication and so on. And uh, Lex provides all these features. Analytics. So the trick to building a good conversational experience is that you're iterating constantly, right? No one gets the experience right the first time. So you build a bot with what you think is the right experience, but then once you built it, you want to continuously analyze how your customers are interacting with your bot so that you can then make the bot more robust. Maybe they're asking it questions which you didn't anticipate, or maybe they're asking the same thing in different ways. And all this is useful information for you to keep improving your chat part. And text-to-speech. So we have Amazon Polly, which is our text-to-speech service, which is, again, integrated natively into Lex. Uh, you just have to pick the voice, the language, and it just works. Uh, so you don't have to make multiple uh, API calls to build your uh, voice experience. Also. When you're building a conversational interface, there are a few principles that we recommend that our customers follow. Right? And uh, with Lex, we do provide the tools for you to achieve these. So starting with social intelligence. So something like addressing the customer by their name. So we, because, like I was saying, we allow you to call the Lambda after every turn, you're able to go fetch the customer's details and say, hello, Mr. So-and-so, welcome back, uh, and so on. The context management. We allow you to store the context in the session so you're able to refer back to their previous action so that they feel like you know and you care about their use case and you're not asking for the same data again and again. Um, giving your bot a personality. So we provide tools where you can provide multiple prompts so that it doesn't sound robotic. Right? So every time it will use a different prompt. You can use, choose different voices to give your bot a personality. Modality. So it, not only works in voice and text, you can also do touch uh, on tools such as Facebook Messenger and dynamic conversations. So customers are not always going to talk to the bot in a way that you uh, 
hope they would or you expected them to. So you need to be able to handle errors gracefully. And for that, we provide error handling capabilities as part of Lex. Some of the common use cases specific to Lex are uh, we're natively integrated with Amazon Connect, which is our contact center in the cloud. So we are seeing a lot of customers use Lex for, as their IVR solution. Uh, and we have many customers in production doing that. Um, application bots, so uh, you, know, you can use Lex to build bots for, to do things like order food or book tickets, informational bots, like I was saying, for your employees uh, to query information, uh, productivity bots, again, in the same category, and IoT bots, where if you have a, a device or a toy or uh, something like that that you want to voice enable, you can use Lex in order to do that. The next problem that we want to help our customers with is how do you give your applications a voice, right? And for that, we launched something called Amazon Poly, which is our text-to-speech service. Really simple. You give it a string of text, and it converts that into lifelike speech and gives you, uh, you know, 57 voices across 28 languages, and it gives you a really tight control over the voice, right? So uh, you can, uh, you know, you can modify the tenor, the, the, the speed, uh, and things like that um, to give whatever personality you want to give to that voice. It's available across 17 different regions, and it's a HIPAA-eligible service. Again, some of the use cases for Poly are navigation, special needs AI assistance, uh, language learning, like I was saying, Duolingo uses it, um, voice video and presentation. So if you want to add voice to a presentation, uh, contact center, so all the different prompts in a contact center. Imagine you're running a contact center and there's uh, for a utility company, and suddenly there's an outage, right? So you're going to get a ton of calls all asking about that outage. So how cool would it be if you could just write up a common message saying, if you're calling with regards to this, um, uh, you know, the outage, uh, we're working on it, and the ETA to get it resolved is three hours from now. You could easily do that with Polly. Whereas if you used, in the olden days, you would use a voice actor, there's no way you are going to be able to get that same person and record this uh, message in that voice. Uh, Polly is also useful for podcasting, uh, voice blogs, and news articles. So we're seeing many customers um, you know, with, with uh, really large websites, just adding voice to their whole website so that people can consume it on their drive, uh, you know, from home to work. Uh, essentially, it, it makes it takes a news article and makes it like a podcast that you can just listen to. The next problem that we try to solve for customers is how do you extract insights from unstructured text? So this. You know, it's a very common uh, use case. I've been talking to a, a number of you over the last few days, and uh, you know, this keeps coming up as one of the problems that a lot of customers are trying to solve, right? For that, we have what we call Amazon Comprehend. Uh, so we launched Comprehend uh, in 2017 at reInvent. Uh, when we launched it, we launched it with a some basic set of functionality. So it does entity extraction, which is Given text, it extracts things like names of people, organizations, locations, dates, numbers. Uh, it extracts key phrases, so uh, things like uh, great price, uh, beautiful windows, and things like that if you know, it's a hotel review. Um, identifies the language of the text, so if you have uh, operational use cases like you're getting feeds from a number of different vendors and you want to figure out what language uh, that let's say, closed captioning file is written in or something like that, you're able to use Comprehend to figure out the language for it. Or emails, let's say you're getting support emails from across the world. You want to know what language it is and then put that in the right queue for your, uh, for your associates that speak that language. You can use Comprehend. Sentiment analysis, so it does positive, negative, mixed, and neutral sentiment. Uh, syntax, so it tags uh, things like nouns, adjectives, and so on for you to get a, you know, a tighter understanding of what's in the text if you want to do more aspect-based sentiment and use cases like that. Uh, and you can group documents together using the topic modeling service, uh, which is uh, you know, it's a managed service to do LDA, essentially. So uh, if you have, let's say, a big corpus of emails uh, and you want to know why are my customers uh, complaining to me, or what are they writing to me about, you can run all these emails through. Uh, topic modeling, and it'll tell you the top 10 topics 
that your customers are writing to you about. And it's a HIPAA-eligible service. And recently, we launched uh, support for a number of uh, languages. So today, we support English, Spanish, French, German, Italian, and Portuguese. Um, and some of the common use cases, like I was saying, uh, personalization, where you can look at the articles that a customer is reading and then recommend similar articles for them, semantic search by indexing on the key phrases, uh, intelligent data warehouse. So there's many more uh, business analysts with equal skills than there are uh, data scientists or even engineers that can do NLP, right? So what you can do is build a pipeline that is able to extract all the structured information from unstructured text and insert that into your data warehouse as a column so that then all your customers or all your engineers that, are, that only know SQL can just query and write things like, hey, uh, select the count of uh, reviews um, where, which are positive and group, them, uh, and group them by day so that you know the number of positive reviews that came in each day over the last one week, things like that. So it makes um, an analysis of unstructured text so much more accessible to your day-to-day -day, uh, business analyst and engineers. Social analytics, so we spoke about it a little bit, where whether it's uh, Twitter feeds or um, uh, reviews on your product website or emails, you're able to analyze all that, um, and information management using tools like uh, topic modeling. And we recently launched two really cool features which uh, I'd like to talk about. The first one is custom classification. So this is really useful for things like um, triaging your support tickets, right? So let's say you have thousands of support tickets and you want to uh, tag them and uh, then send them to the appropriate uh, group to resolve. You could do that. Uh, moderate forums. So if you have certain categories of comments, right, um, you can uh, use classification to tag every comment based on your categories. Essentially what the service does is if you have a set of labels, right, whether it is, uh, let's say, pricing, cancel account, loyalty program. So these are emails coming in, and you want to put them in one of these three categories. You manually figure out which emails are pricing related, which emails are cancel related, which ones are loyalty related. Find a bunch of examples for that and upload it into the service, and it learns based on the examples you provided, so that the next time you send an email, it will put a label on it, right? So this is really useful to achieve a number of different use cases, very flexible, um, you know, even things like emotional analysis. So let's say you want uh, you know, to take uh, analyst reports, financial analyst reports, and you want to figure out whether it's a buy, sell, what's the emotion in that, right? So you can decide how to categorize them, put a label on them, and then just train the service with those examples. From then on, every new analyst report it will categorize into one of the categories that you trained it to do. Next one is custom entities, right? So today we extract things like uh, name, location, city, organization, brand, and things like that. But let's say you have certain custom, you're an insurance company, you want to extract uh, policy numbers, right? You're a legal company, you want to extract case names or judge names. You're able to do that using custom entities, where if you give the um, types of uh, entities that you want to extract and documents that contain those entities, we're able to learn from that. And then the next time you give us text, so for example here, hello, my name is Sean Stevens, and thank you for calling Amazon. I understand you're calling about the part number, right? So we don't do part numbers as part of regular Comprehend, but because you trained a, a, the custom entity service, we're able to extract the part number. Um, and you can even do small phrases like talk to a manager. Uh, if that's important to you, then it will look for that in the text and extract that for you. The next service, or the next problem that we wanted to solve was how you can make your applications listen. Right? So for that, we launched what we call Amazon Transcribe, uh, which is our uh, automatic speech recognition service. So uh, if you were watching closely, I also spoke about speech recognition when I spoke about Lex, right? Uh, that, that was a speech recognition that is more tuned towards a conversational use case. 
but we have many customers who have long phone calls, like 30-minute phone calls, or videos for, uh, for which they want to add subtitles. So for that, we launched a different service, which is tuned more towards longer form audio, which is called Amazon Transcribe. And we support multiple formats. It works really well on telephony audio. Uh, I call that out because uh, we know that a majority of our customers have large, really large amounts of um, telephony data that they're collecting as part of their contact centers. But they're only sampling 3 to 5% of those calls. And the rest of the uh, calls, no one is listening to, right? So imagine how much of intelligence is just being thrown away or just sitting there idle um, with no one looking into it. With Transcribe, you're able to uh, transcribe your entire corpus and then use text analytics like Comprehend to understand what's in that, right? So um, what sort of complaints do they have? How can I improve my product? Are my agents um, serving my customers right? Uh, do I need to coach my agents better? Are they saying the, um, the legally required uh, disclaimers before they provide uh, you know, any advice? So you can do so many use cases by combining uh, Transcribe with Comprehend and so on. And we support a wide range of formats, from WAV files to uh, even video MP4s. And it's integrated with S3, CloudWatch, CloudTrail. So if you want to do things like set up a pipeline where you kick off jobs, and once the job's over, you run your text analytics and so on, you can use things like CloudWatch for it. Some of the key features are custom vocabulary. So if you have domain-specific words, right? Let's say you're doing education, and you want to do things like, uh, I don't know, mitochondria or um, you know, certain science terms. You can load up that whole thing as a custom vocabulary, and they act as hints to the speech recognition engine. Uh, it does speaker identification. So if you have multiple speakers on a single channel, it's able to identify those speakers. But if you have multi-channel, which is most of the contact center audio is multi-channel, the agent is on one channel, and the um, a customer is on one, we do channel identification too. So you don't have to split the channels. You just load the whole file, and we will split it up. We will transcribe it, label it, and put it back together so that you can analyze what the agent said separately and what the customer said separately. Punctuation and capitalization. So the output from transcribe uh, has full stops, capitalizations, commas, apostrophes, and so on. I'll, I'll shortly show you a demo of that. So it makes it much more readable. Uh, word level timestamps. So if you want to do things like coaching for an agent, and you know that the agent said something, and you want to listen what the context was, you can click on that word, and it'll go straight to that exact second in your audio, and you can listen to what happened you know, before and after that. Uh, so you can do subtitling using these word-level uh, word, uh, timestamps as well, and align the audio with the text output. And you get word-level confidence scores. Again, when you want 100% accuracy, you can have a human look at transcribed output and fix any words that it got wrong, right? So for which you can only look at the words which have low confidence scores. Uh, today, we've got support for US English, British English, Australian English, Canadian French, and US Spanish. And very soon, we'll be adding uh, support for more languages. And recently, we launched the streaming capability for Amazon Transcribe. So uh, as the audio is coming in, we use HTTP 2.0 for streaming, and we're able to uh, send back uh, the stream of transcribed text. So uh, opens up a lot of really cool use cases where uh, you can, let's say, have a contact center agent um, you know, doing the call. And as the text is coming in, you can look for sentiment. And let's say the customer is getting really upset, you can escalate the call. right? You can send the call to uh, a supervisor. Or uh, you can you know, look for keywords and suggest help articles to the agent so that he's able to serve the customer better. So some of the common use cases for Transcribe are uh, media subtitles. So like I've said, a uh, massive use case where, uh, in fact, uh, in some countries, there are laws requiring uh, media uh, to have subtitles so that it's accessible to everybody, even folks that cannot hear. Uh, so it's a huge use case for Amazon Transcribe. Contact center analytics, so you know, all that contact center audio 
can be analyzed, and you can serve your customers better, build better products, um, and you know, be more efficient. Meeting minutes as well as uh, code depositions. So uh, for you know, let's say you recorded a conference call and you want to take minutes, rather than someone transcribing the whole thing, you can just use transcribe to get the text. And code deposition. So if you have court recordings, you want to make that searchable for your lawyers, you can again use transcribe um, to archive all the text and make it searchable. Here's a quick demo that we recorded. Um, you know, one of the PMs on my team. So I'm just going to go ahead and play it. This is a demo for transcribe streaming. Can we play the file on the previous slide? Hello, everybody. My name is Paul. I am the product manager for Amazon's automatic speech recognition service. I would like to take this opportunity to show you a quick demonstration of our cool new feature called streaming transcription. We've built a neat little sample application to showcase just how easy it is to use our service to open a bi-directional connection. You can securely pass a stream of audio to our service, and in return, we send you a stream of text transcription in real time. As you can see from the output window, our transcription occurs in real time. The machine learning models in the backend intelligently use the additional context to augment text output. Streaming transcription makes it easy for developers to add real-time speech-to-text capabilities to their applications. So as you can see, Transcribe was able to get the name of the person in caps, right, in the first line. It's able to get even the apostrophe S after Amazon. Right? And there's also a lot of really uh, you know, complex words uh, in, in this text that it's able to get accurately and with really low uh, latency. So a very useful feature for a lot of different use cases, even things like dictation and so on. So here's sort of a, you know, a, a schematic diagram of how you would uh, use transcribe and comprehend and all the different tools for contact center analytics, right? So your calls coming into Amazon Connect, uh, that data is getting stored uh, in S3, and then um, first you're doing Amazon Lex to do the IVR, and then when Lex is not able to solve, it passes it to a human. That's the call recording that goes to S3, and then it goes to transcribe. A trans transcript is then run through Comprehend, and finally you can use tools like Tableau or QuickSight or so on for uh, running your analytics. And the last service I'm going to talk about today uh, is um, helps you make your applications uh, multilingual. Uh, but before I go into that, uh, I'll quickly touch upon a, a, a service that we just launched at reInvent. We launched Comprehend Medical, which is part of the Comprehend family. And just like Comprehend, it extracts entities, but it does medical entities. So it does things like uh, medication um, and, and tests. Uh, and dosage and frequency and so on, and also the relationships between the medication and the dosage, right? Um, and it also does things like uh, negation, um, uh, which provides the context, right? Really important if the doctor said the patient did not take aspirin, uh, you want to make sure that you know that that's something that they did not take, not just assume that because it's in that text, it's, it's all, uh, you know, medication that the patient is using, right? Um, so. And it also extracts uh, personal health information, PHI. So if you want to de-identify, uh, of course, you should always use a human to check it to make sure that it's 100% accurate. But it does uh, the initial level of uh, extraction of uh, PHI data. So moving into uh, translation, Amazon Translate is, a, again, a fully managed, continuously trained service that uh, translates text from one language uh, to another. So with Translate, what we did was we used something called uh, neural machine translation, right? And why is that important? You've all tried uh, over the years uh, many uh, other techniques of translation. On, you know, you've gone to uh, websites where you've tried to translate certain things, and most times the translation quality is really bad. And that's because there was an older form of technique being used called phrase-based translation, which doesn't take the context. Uh, it's just doing phrase by phrase, so it's not very natural. 
With neural ma machine translation, it's done contextually, it does full sentences, and the output is quite fluent. So let's take an example, right? Uh, so some of you may have seen it, uh, seen this example, so bear with me. This is a pocket knife that is being sold on Amazon.de. Uh, it integrates 87 tools and offers 141 functions, guaranteed. So we took one of the uh, customer reviews on, on the DE website, and we used an open source engine that's out there to do the translation for the first time. And here's what we got. Really a very good pocket knife. Had yesterday after breakfast something poppy hang between the teeth because I once again found no toothpicks. I ordered mine without further ado. This pocket knife, the integrated toothpick, NR3, is very stable, and very quickly I could clean my teeth. Super. To the rest, I can tell nothing, unfortunately, because I'm, I him not be emergency. So that's what uh, open source uh, free engine came up with. And then we used uh, Amazon Translate, and this is what we got, right? Really a very good pocket knife. Had a little poppy between the teeth yesterday after breakfast. Since I didn't find a toothpick again, I ordered this pocket knife shortly. The integrated toothpick, number three, is very stable, and I could clean my teeth very quickly. Great. I can't say anything about the rest because I don't need it. So very different from what you saw before. And you can see that it's much more natural, much more fluent. And what, does, what this does is opens up a ton of new use cases for you, right? Imagine if uh, every person in your company could speak 21 languages, right? That's how powerful this is because, uh, you know, for use cases where you don't need like 100% accuracy, you're able to understand exactly what the other person's saying using our translation service. Uh, and it's almost as accurate as a, as a human. Uh, in our test, it comes out, you know, uh, in, in, in the high 80s. So some of the features are it supports 21 languages or 417 combinations. <laughs> it's really uh, price for value, so it costs $15 per a million characters. You can always do discounts if you guys are doing high volumes. Uh, it's real time, so you can use it for applications like chat. It handles tags so that uh, you know if there's formatting, it's able to generate the same format in the output. Uh, follows all the data security. Um, uh, that AWS offers, uh, including all the encryption and access management, and super easy to use because it's available um, as part of a simple API call. It's, it's also HIPAA eligible. So uh, use cases, let's talk about some of the use cases that you can use Translate for. So enterprise knowledge where, uh, let's say you're a global company and you have documents in Chinese, German, English, across the world, you're able to translate all of them and search through all, all these documents, right? Uh, again, search media assets. So uh, one use case we have is there's this company that has a lot of uh, images, and uh, they want their images to be searchable in multiple languages, right? So let's say I'm looking for an image of a sunset. Um, I, I don't care where in the world that is clicked, because sunset is you know as beautiful wherever in the world. So. Um, if I have the text describing that image in multiple languages, people in Germany can search for it, people in um, China can search for it, and people in, um, you know, uh, in India can also search for it uh, in any of the local languages. The subtitling and captioning, like I was saying, uh, if you have videos that have subtitles that you want um, translated in many languages so that folks can, across uh, the world can view that content, you can do that with Translate. Uh, contact center communication, so you can have uh, your contact center associates just speak one language and serve customers across the world. Um, imagine how much uh, efficiency uh, that gets you uh, with, with chat and things like that. Um, customer analytics, again, when you have data in multiple languages, you can translate all of that and then analyze uh, in, in the same language. Uh, multilingual communication, so uh, let's say you have employees sitting in China, employees sitting in Germany, and they want to chat with each other, and they don't have um, you know, a comfort with a common language like English. You can do real-time translation where one person types and reads in German, and the other person types and reads in Chinese. Uh, publishing and ops and compliance, where uh, you can make sure that uh, you know, your employees are able to uh, look at data in different languages 
and uh, and review them and make sure that uh, they're compliant. Uh, with that, uh, it brings me to the end of my presentation for today. Hopefully, this is very informative, and uh, you know, I open to questions. Hi, uh, I wanted to ask you this thing, uh, like uh, your uh, Amazon uh, NER, which is entity recognition. How good it is able to recognize Indian names. Uh, so I'll give you an example. I, uh, we are developing one in-house product in our organization, and I was uh, working on NER. And uh, it was not able to recognize Indian names, and it was not able to classify those correctly. I've been using some open source uh, Python libraries on that, so just wanted to know about it. Uh, that, that's good feedback. Uh, we try to have as diverse a data set as we can when we're training the service, but um, you know, uh, totally fair feedback. So would love to connect with you. If you could send us an email, uh, give me some samples, you can certainly take a look at where uh, it's not functioning like it should be. Um, so happy to take a look and connect with you offline about that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, this side. Oh, oh there you hi. go. Yeah, uh, I was using your transcribe service for a code deposition POC project. Uh -huh. uh, so I have a two problems here. So first thing is I'm giving an audio file. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a problem with identifying the speakers. Okay. Uh, so how we can really solve it? Okay, uh, leave the old part, like the future code depositions, if I want to put a mic or some sort of an audio stuff there, how many channels do you recommend to put it so that I, that would be easy channel identification for me so that the future depositions would be easy so that I can at least break down the future project in a different sense and the old audios in a different sense. Currently right. that's, uh, I'm just trying to break it out, it's not happening with me. Got it. So today we do uh, two channels because we see that the most common uh, use case is the contact center use case. But we can certainly work with you if you want more channels than that. Let's say in a court, I don't know, four or five different channels. Sure. Um, certainly something that we're open to. Um, I would love to connect offline. Yes. That. Thanks. Any other questions? One right there. Hi, um, I just, this is a question, a two-part question, particularly to uh, Amazon Lex. So um, it's, it's currently in just two regions, right, in the U.S. Uh, one, is, uh, one is Oregon and one is uh, Northern Virginia, east, right? East, east. Uh, what's Virginia. the... Um, it's like, also available in Dublin. Oh, yeah, Dublin. Okay, sorry. So any um, future plans of getting it extended to other regions, specifically APAC? Certainly. Certainly. Uh, the reason why we haven't put it out in more regions is because of the language coverage. Uh, right. But as we start launching new languages, which we will do starting right, right, uh, right. next year, we're going to uh, put it out in more regions. Yeah, just the second part was relating to the multi-language support because it's just English uh, US at this point, right? Yes. So yes. I have a client who's probably looking into like expanding some of their implementations into multilingual uh, capabilities at the, in the near future, and let's say, say one year down the line or two mm -hmm. years down the line. So that's what I wanted to know if that's happening. Yeah, I mean, the best way to do that is, you know, if you can talk to your uh, account uh, exec at Amazon, give them that feedback. We have uh, something called a product feature request. So mm -hmm. they're able to cut those requests okay. to us. Right. So we, we know in general the demand for each language, right? Okay. So we'd look at the languages that has the most uh, requests okay. when, when we're prioritizing that. So uh, right. we'd love to get that feedback. So till then, I guess, like using something like a translate in between as a, like, a, Certainly something something could, could, could be like a good, better solution, right? Yeah, it, people have tried it and found success. Uh, but our aim is to actually have native uh, support for the languages. So uh, we're working really hard on that. OK, thank you so much. I have one question. Uh, you pointed out uh, in all your services, you are HIPAA compliant. Yeah, but, except uh, Lex. Uh, yeah, Lex. Uh, what about other uh, sectors, like financial sector, banking? Are, do you have any certifications over there in terms of data uh, privacy? Not yet, but uh, certainly something that uh, is on top of our mind. So you will be seeing these services uh, get certified uh, for the financial services and others. Um, and those will happen quickly because you know the rules across these, there's a lot of common commonality. Um, so certainly on the cards. Thank you. All right, if there's no other questions, then is there one last one there? All right, thank you guys, thanks for coming. And uh, 
Hopefully, you're able to build a lot of really cool applications with all these services.